All right, so in this final section, we're going to bring our Podium Render and our Z-Depth Pass into Photoshop and then apply a lens blur and end up with an effect something like this, right? So we've got our raw render from SU Podium, the Z-Depth Pass, and we're gonna use this to control a lens blur effect. And the final image should be something like this. We've got the foreground with the wine bottle and uh, the seating here in focus and then the background with this plant and the, the far wall are out of focus, just like it would be if you were shooting uh, with a relatively wide aperture from a, a moderate to long photographic lens. So if you've followed along and created your own images, go ahead and open those in Photoshop now. If you downloaded the project files, they're just right in the project files folder, Podium Render and Z Buffer. Open them both in Photoshop and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and duplicate this layer, just because I like to work in a non-destructive manner in Photoshop. That way, if I make changes to the top layer, I've always got the original to fall back on, just in case. All right, so the first thing we need to do is load the Z-Depth Pass into the alpha channel of this image. Now the reason we do that is because we're going to use the Z-Depth to control the extent of the lens blur. Everything showing up as black in this render is going to be, or in this depth pass, is going to be blurred. Everything white is going to be in sharper focus. And then these two gray objects, the plant and the vehicle, are going to have a slight blur, but not as much as the background. And what I mean by that should be a lot more clear when we go through the rest of the process. So. To get this image into the alpha channel of the podium render, I can just hit Control A to select all and Control C to copy. Or if I wanted, I could go to select all, edit, copy, and that's gonna put it in the clipboard. So then we'll flip back to the podium render. And right here next to the layers panel, there's a channels column. Go into the channels and we see we've got our red, green, and blue channels, and then the composite RBG. If I come down and click add a new channel, it's gonna add an alpha channel, which is what we want. So I select this box, hit Control V, and as you can see, we now have our Z depth pass in the alpha channel of the podium render. Um, I wanna see the actual image and not the alpha channel, so I'm gonna click RGB here and then just turn off the visibility of the alpha and then go back into the layers tab. All right, now we're ready to apply the lens blur and give this image a depth of field effect. So with the top layer selected, come up to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur, and immediately we see the preview is not quite what we were looking for. And that's because right now Photoshop is just blurring the entire image uniformly. But the great thing about the lens blur tool is that it can recognize a depth map and use that to drive where the image is blurred. So up here in the right-hand column under Depth Map Source, I'm gonna select that alpha channel and we'll immediately see uh, something resembling the photographic depth of field that we're looking for. But the focus isn't in the right place, right? In this case, the background is sharp and the foreground is blurred. Uh, and we were sort of looking for the opposite effect. So we have two options. I can either click the Invert button here and that's going to invert the mask, and that brings the foreground into focus. Or I can leave the mask as it was and click anywhere on the image to change the focal point. So if I want to focus on the wine bottle, I center the crosshair over it, click, and that immediately brings the focal plane to the wine bottle. Uh, I could click the vehicle to make that sharp, the plant, this ottoman, this foreground seating, and anywhere I click, is going to become sharp and then other regions of the image uh, become blurry. Now you'll notice that this works better on some focal planes than others, right? So when we're centered on the wine bottle, this looks pretty believable and that's because we tone mapped the depth pass specifically so that the wine bottle would be in focus and the background would be out of focus. But if I focus back on this plant, you can sort of see that there's aspects of this that look fine. These mid-ground elements especially, I think, are believable. Um, but the edges of the furniture, the edges of the vehicle, don't quite look the way they would if we shot this through a photographic lens. So I think my final recommendation would be to, when, when you're configuring the Z-Tone Mapper line in the preset, 
have a specific focal point in mind and just know you want that item to be white and you want everything behind it to gradually fall off toward black. Uh, and, and don't rely too much on the lens blur tool to place the focal point. Try and plan that ahead of time um, in the render engine. All right, so that about wraps it up. Uh, there are a few other options here in the right-hand side of the panel that I just want to go through real quick. Uh, there's a radius slider, so if I turn this to zero. You can see there's no blur at all. I had it at 16 before, but if I move this way up to like 80 or something like that, the image gets super, super blurry. Um, but, but that starts to break the illusion too. So you want to find a good medium value that looks believable to you. And I think I had just decided that somewhere around 15 uh, was pretty realistic looking. Beneath that, there's a couple different iris shapes. And these just give a slightly different quality to the blur. I had it on octagon initially, uh, but I kind of think triangle looks sort of nice. Blade curvature, all these things just subtly change the way that the blur is gonna look in the finished image. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on down here, there's a noise slider. Sometimes when you shoot uh, depth of field through a photographic lens, you'll get a little bit of noise in the blurry sections. Uh, and so you could come in here and move this to like two or three. Maybe that's a little too much. Uh, we'll just stay with two. And so you see we've got some noise in the blurry parts of the image. Um, I think that's a matter of taste. I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm gonna click OK. And there's our finished render with some depth of field from Podium. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys so much for following along. If you have any questions, uh, either let me know in the comments or in the Podium forums, or even send an email to support at catalogink.com. This was a lot of fun to play around with and, and do some experiments with and stuff, so I would love to see what you guys do with it. And that about wraps it up, so I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.